A former great coach joins ESPN. Everything's coming up Michigan. A streak is snapped in the NHL. And stars are on the move in the NBA. This is your 10-minute sports report. Hello and welcome. I am your host, Captain Bourne. This is your 10-minute sports report. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, everyone, for engaging on the last pod episode or 10-minute sports report episode. Uh, We will be getting back into making all new episodes of the 4th and 1 podcast very shortly. We are just still on hiatus. I would like everyone to take this time to comment down below who you got in the Super Bowl, 40, Niners, or Chiefs, and why don't we start the 10-minute sports report right then. All righty, Patty Mahomes has the chance to become an all-time great on many levels if Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs are able to defeat the San Francisco 49ers. On Sunday in uh, the Super Bowl, he, in his first seven seasons, will have three championships and two MVPs. Here is the list of players he will join who also have three championships and two MVPs in their first seven seasons. Larry Bird, Bill Russell, Mickey Mantle, Stan Musel, Joe DiMaggio, and Guy LaFleur. Ladies and gentlemen, he would be instantly an all-time great he would be talked in the sports history books forever at this point in time he probably will be anyway but this would wrap it up put a bow on it put it under the tree to be opened on christmas day ladies and gentlemen we could be looking at the next tom brady the next better than Tom Brady in Patrick Mahomes, but the last pick in the NFL draft, Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, might have something to say about that. So uh, tune in. It is like 625. It'll be on CBS. It, It will be the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers battling out for football supremacy. All righty. Now, in college football news, Nick Saban will join College Game Day as an analyst. He has long been uh, suspected that when he retired, he would take over for the great coach Lee Corso. Here's the deal, though. They're replacing an 85-year-old man with a 72-year-old man. So how much life does Saban have in it? I don't know. He will also be on the SEC network, but he will join ESPN as an analyst, both but primarily on game day. This is excellent. Uh, ESPN's ratings will go through the roof. He kind of joined ESPN um during the college football playoff when Alabama wasn't in it over the last couple of years. So he is definitely a, uh, he's not really a character either. Um, he kind of just states facts. So I'm wondering if this being on college game day will bring him out of his shell at all, because I would really like to see that. Or if this is kind of how he's like all the time, he was a great, he is the greatest college football coach of all time. I do believe that. Let's see, uh, if it kind of, uh, if we're able to get the greatest college football coach of all time to be the greatest college game day analyst of all time. He's got a lot of work to do to do that, but I'm sure he's going to attack every day with enthusiasm, with a cup of coffee, and two Little Debbie oatmeal cream pies. All righty, I said streaks were snapped, and they were indeed in the NHL. On Tuesday, February 6th, the Edmonton Oilers, winners of 16 straight, walk into Vegas. By the way, Vegas is hot this week. You got Radio Road. The Super Bowl's there. UFC 300 is there. Home of Dana White. Everyone is in Vegas this weekend. And they started the week, the Golden Knights did, by snapping the NHL's longest winning streak of the Edmonton Oilers. Aiden Hill makes 30-plus saves on the day. Aiden Hill shut down the Edmonton Oilers as Vegas got a 3-1 victory earlier Monday. Um, Colorado went to New York and lost in overtime 2-1. 
Wednesday coming at you tonight. Colorado continues their road tour as they travel down to North Carolina from New York to take on the Hurricanes. Vegas is on the road. That's probably smart by the schedule makers. They're on the road in Arizona and play there tonight as well. If we tune in to the standings, sometimes this play soundbite player just doesn't want to go. But if we tune into the standings, Colorado Avalanche have 68 points. They sit a Top the Western Conference Central, tied with the Dallas Stars at both at 68 points. The Avalanche, however, have lost two games out, so they look to snap their two-game losing streak tonight. The Dallas Stars also lost their last time out. Here's how bad it is in the Western Conference Central right now. The top one, two, three, four, five, six have all lost, are all on losing streaks. Winnipeg Jets, loser of four straight, 65 points. So it's Avalanche, Stars, Jets right there in that order. Then the next closest to those three are the St. Louis Blues at 54 points. In the Pacific, the Vancouver Canucks have 73 points on a two-game winning streak, 8-0-2. The Vegas Golden Knights, 66 points, won that last time out against... The Edmonton Oilers, who are still 9-1 and one in their last 10, mind you, who have 59 points. So remember, Edmonton came from below the Kraken, who have 52 points, and who are 4-5-1. and one. The In the Pacific, the Kraken currently are 5th. The Oilers were 6th behind the Kraken. And then went on their amazing run. As it is, as it stands in hockey in the Western Conference, Avalanche, Stars, Jets, Canucks, Knights, Oilers, Wild Card are Kings and Blues, 56, 54 points, Predators, 52 points, Kraken, oh, I'm sorry, Predators, 54, Kraken, 52. So a uh, tight knit bunch right there. All righty, tune in over to the NBA itself. On Monday night, Dallas Mavericks went to Philadelphia and got a 118-102 win behind 23 points by Kyrie Irving. The Philadelphia 76ers are struggling, and the NBA trade deadline could not have come soon enough to infuse some winning scoring in there because without Joel Embiid, they just are on good. Meanwhile, Cleveland keeps rolling. Cleveland hosted Sacramento and got a 136 to 110 victory. That was Monday. On Wednesday, Golden State went to Philadelphia and just ran over them 127 to 104. Philadelphia not putting up much of a fight to anybody without Joel Embiid. If we uh, Cleveland also on Wednesday went to Washington and just continue their winning ways behind 40 points from Donovan Mitchell, got a 114 to 106 victory. If we look at the standings, the Boston Celtics in the East still lead by five games, but now there's a new runner in town. By the way, the Milwaukee Bucks were third when they fired their coach. They are now Third in the Eastern Conference standings, one and four with Doc Rivers. They are five and five in their last 10 on a two game losing streak. Meanwhile, the Cleveland Cavaliers, probably the hottest team in all of basketball. And ladies and gentlemen, they are right. They've won seven straight. They are nine and one in their last 10 games. They are now in second in the um, Eastern Conference, five games back of the Boston Celtics. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia 76 is one of the coldest teams in all of basketball. They're eight and a half games back, three and seven in their last 10 on a three-game losing streak. The distance between the second seed and the sixth seed is five and a half games. Philadelphia sits eight and a half back. That's, if you do the math, three and a half back of second place. So Cavaliers are hot. Boston might is the best team in the East, clearly. Milwaukee, who knows? And Philadelphia's ice cold without Joel Embiid. If you flip it over to the Western Conference, we have three teams tied for first place in the Western Conference. The Thunder, the Timberwolves, the Nuggets. Half game back of them are the LA Clippers. Okay? And then five games back of all those teams sit the Phoenix Suns and the Pelicans. Half game back of the... Suns and the Pelicans, so five and a half back, for those of you who can't do math, are the Sacramento Kings. Seven and a half back of first place are the Mavericks. Eight and a half back Lakers. Nine and a half back Jazz. The distance from the eighth seed to the twelfth seed is four and a half games currently. 
So we're get, getting down the stretch, and it is going to be fun, and it is going to be hot, hot, hot. Oh, the NBA trade deadline is here, and it could not hurt soon enough for some teams. A lot of teams that move players to try to get it. The Los Angeles Lakers are doing no trading whatsoever. They need it. Again, they sit Okay, they're in the play currently. Leaning on a 40-year-old LeBron James. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia 76ers, they got to get a team that can win without Joel Embiid, and they're trying to do it. They're trading their youngster, Jaden Springer, to the Boston Celtics for a second-round pick. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. Then the Philadelphia 76ers are trading Patrick, Patrick Beverly to the Milwaukee Bucks. How Patrick Beverly has any... Uh, fortitude, uh, trade value. He's a great defensive player, great leader, but not a good scorer, which I guess is what Milwaukee needs. To the Milwaukee Bucks for Cameron Payne, a scorer and a second round pick. So Philadelphia adding more scoring, adding more scoring. Well, along those lines, the Philadelphia 76ers traded Dan Daniel House Jr. and a second round pick to the New York Knicks to free up cap room to sign guard Kyle Lowry, who is expected to be waived by the Hornets and is from Philadelphia. Then at 1024 a.m. this morning, the Philadelphia 76ers acquired three-point stud Buddy Heald from the Indiana Pacers, one of the highest-scoring teams in basketball, for Marcus Morris and Fructon Korkmaz and three second-round picks. So the Philadelphia 76ers says, we can't score. Without Joel Embiid, we're adding scoring because we need to win this East because our time window with Joel Embiid is closing and closing rapidly as the seven foot two big man approaches 30. And once big men hit 30, they. All righty. And finally, everything's coming up Michigan so far. So they just scheduled their spring game on April 20th, but. The College Football Playoff Selection Committee, Ward Manuel, Michigan's athletic director, has been named chairman. So he will have to be in that awkward position of every Tuesday night when the College Football Playoff Selection Committee does something outrageously dumb and makes no sense. He will have to go on live television and look like an idiot, as all the former chairmans before him of the college playoff selection committee have done and try to explain their decision. So I feel bad for Michigan. Meanwhile, Michigan loses their D-line coach, Mike Elston, to the Chargers. Jim Harbaugh, go get your own staff. Not from Michigan. Okay, stop taking our people. You're, you, have ro- you have raised Michigan to national prominence from the top of the mountain. And now you are solely going to raise us to the top of the mountain and take the entire staff, which will cause every single player, defensive player from the number one defense in the nation that made my uncle and long, long time Michigan fan who got me into me said, that's the best defense he's ever seen. And ladies and gentlemen, hindsight's 2020. And I just thought they were playing bad competition. They didn't allow over 25 points. Elston leaves Minter leaves. Their secondary uh, cornerback coach who was in charge of getting Will Johnson and some other four or five-star corner, he might be moving. That whole defense might enter the transfer portal. But we're about to see what these Michigan men are made of, whether it is culture or whether Michigan, too, players are just in for the money. I like to think that Michigan players are big and better and more smart and are in it for the right reasons. But ladies and gentlemen, money is money. And when you're 18, you're 18 years old. And that's all you can see. And that'll do it for this rendition of the 10 Minutes Sports Report. Thank you everyone for being here. This new soundbite thing is just, I just hate it so much. So you may or may not get music when I hit this button. If you do not, sorry, not sorry. Um, Know that God loves you. I pray God blesses you. Wash those hands because you're all filthy animals. And until next time, peace out, guys.